Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Native Diaries. It's episode five of season one of the show. You know what to do, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back and enjoy the show. Over the previous episodes, we've been busy introducing the birds that we've got here in the Canary Room for the 2023 breeding season. So today and in future episodes, what we're going to do is we're going to track their progress throughout the course of the breeding season. So we will have naturally the highs and of course lows that come with breeding native British finches. Um, so where to start? I tell you what, we'll start outside. We'll start with the goldfinches. Now the goldfinches looked in condition really early on. And what I have seen of the goldfinches is caught a little bit of it on, on film here, a little bit of displaying. So a little bit of behavior displaying the male tail flicking. Um, weather has been mixed. We've had some warm days, we've had some cold days, but it's an external environment. So there is no control of it, obviously. Um, so no sign of any nests. We have seen them picking up some nesting material. We've seen them sort of taking a bit of an interest in the nest. We haven't seen anything in earnest yet. We are giving them some live food. Uh, so we're giving them some mini meal worms uh, and hopefully that that will help to bring them into condition. So those are our goldfinches. Nothing to report as yet. Not too unconcerned about that at this point in time. I think, you know, still early and hopefully throughout the season we'll have something positive to announce similar story really with the bullfinches now um in previous years at this stage bullfinches have gone down to nest for me uh, and at this stage they haven't uh, I'm not sure whether I've got the environment right for the bullfinches, if the truth be known. There is now, um, in the garage where they are, there is a daylight bulb, um, that's on a timer, that's been on for four or five weeks now. They are also getting uh, a little bit of live food as well, and um, they've got two nest sites to select from. But at this moment in time, not a great deal to report on the bullfinches, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that, you know, they start, they start to do something. But we have, we have got some really positive news in the room. So stay tuned for that. One of the natives which often causes us heartbreak here in the Canary Room is the Red Poles. Um, and this year, well, it's mixed. It's mixed, it's fair to say. We've got at least five pairs. I say five pairs because one of the pairs, and we're not 100% certain whether it is a pair, whether it is a cock and hen, or whether it is uh, possibly two cock birds. So with the red poles, um, the, uh, the the normals um, have built a nest. Now they built a nest a long time ago and they keep relining it, um, not laid yet, but I'm not unduly concerned. They were the first pair to build, um, but I'm not unduly concerned that they haven't laid yet. So it's a young hen. So we'll see how she gets on. The Cobalts, that's a different matter. Uh, the Cobalts built a nest. Um, again, it's a young hen. It's an over year cock bird, as it is with the, the normals. Um, she's built a nest and they are on eggs, which are due to hatch very soon. I haven't checked them. Um, I believe them to be full, um, but I haven't checked them um, as yet. So I'm gonna let her sit. They're due to hatch in the next couple of days or so. Um, we do, we do, regular viewers to the, the Canary Room will know that we do have some red pole chicks. Now, in the last episode of the Canary Room, we had four chicks. Unfortunately, we've lost one. We have got three, uh, which are really feathered up, which are likely to leave the nest in the next couple of days. So this is a pair of pied birds. Um, it's a straight pair of pied birds. Uh, and all of the young are pied and they're looking good. I'm giving a, a mix of things. There's always soak seed available. There's some mini mealworms available, which they are plowing through. Less interested, they seem, in the um, the pinkies, the frozen pinkies. Um, don't seem to be massively interested in them, but they are devouring the mini mealworms. So happy to provide live food for them. Our third pair of uh, red poles, which are doing something, is the agate hen and the pied cock. The agate hen is split for pied. Um, she's laid now four eggs. 
so she is just starting to incubate those so within 10 11 days hopefully we'll find out if they are full now i took a shot of one of the eggs here it's very blue very very blue uh, which is interesting to see um, and then our, our sort of our, our another pair of pies what i have done with them is i've put another nest site in because i'm not 100 percent certain that they're particularly impressed with the nest sites that i've given them so far so on our mules and hybrids well the greeny hen has laid one egg and um, we've set that uh, i think it's full in fact it may have even chipped out. We've got it under grey wings and there's a number of birds in there. I'm not sure they're all grey wings. I think we might have a, uh, a greeny mule in there. At least I hope so. Not 100%, as I say. Um, the, um, the Goldie and the uh, Norwich. The Norwich has started to build up. Um, so fingers crossed that we get something there. And the Linnet and the Norwich, uh, nothing, no action there. The Siskins, again, they're outside in the garage, and I don't know that that environment is going to be conducive for them to breed. I don't think the five hens are in condition, if the truth be known. I think the uh, the Siskin cock would thread my finger if it could, um, but I'm not sure about the other birds out there. So, talking of Siskins, if we spin round very quickly, you'll see that the uh, the siskin cock and hen are here now the siskin hen did build a lovely nest she built it in the corner um so i put a nest a uh, little nest pan in there she had a couple of nest sites didn't like either of them built up in the corner what we've got in here is a um siskin cock uh, and she laid five eggs she laid five eggs and i left them in and i left the cock in and I'd gone away for a couple of days and I came back and there were no eggs. So I can only assume that the siskin cock had destroyed them. Now she has subsequently laid another egg, which I've set under the cobalt red poles. So we'll find out if that's full over the next few days. Um, and what you might be able to see here is that he's in siskin jail at the moment. Now I am gonna let him out in a minute. Um, she hasn't laid this morning, but I am going to now move him away on a night. Um, so just to make sure that I don't get any nonsense from that. And our final update in the Native Diaries this week is from the Twites. Now, um, I am delighted to say that the Twites have done two things. So uh, I had two nest sites in and they didn't show any sign at all, but the birds themselves looked interested. So I put a third site in uh, and within a day or two, they'd started to build the nest. And this morning we have our first Twite egg. So we will keep everything crossed, uh, as is always the way for the twite egg. I've always said with the native finches, you know, the, the sort of there's a number of stages that you go through. So the first stage is uh, they they make it to the season, so they don't fall off the perch. The second stage, okay, the second stage is that they pair bond and they get on okay. Third stage is eggs, then full eggs, then young chipped then you are ringing the young, that's important, and then the, the young survive after you've rung them. And then obviously you want those young away and you want them on the, sta the, the stick. So five, six, seven stages really of breeding native birds. But listen, you keep tuned to this show. As always, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, until next time, everyone, take care.